I've always gone in and done things, what they said, it cannot be done, it's an impossibility. The impossibility can be done. So we're taking care of that problem, one family at a time. That's why I may have to make this better. I can't stop population growth, but I, what we can do is build a house that has near zero impact on the planet. We're cutting down the rainforest, but we're planning a rainforest in every home we build. They've got the action, we've got the reaction. We're at war with the planet. We want to save it. We're up 24-7. The planet doesn't have a day off. We don't have a day off. In these times of political and philosophical polarization that stifles progress, sustainability is a uniting theme. It is something upon which we can all agree. Who can argue that we should strive for cleaner, healthier, more efficient, more economical, more risk-averse ways of doing things? The effort towards sustainability is no more than a fight for freedom. If I started personally, 1975, building a similar building, wind power, solar, and all those kinds of things, and comes into the second building here, which is a research center, basically, a a technology incubator and so what we've proven with this building with all the scientists that are in here that we are now able to come up with a home which will be fully sustainable meaning that we will actually be off the grid in luxury where you will manufacture your own water manufacturing your own energy and uh, what our double and triple greenhouses do part of our house it becomes uh, reduces 80 percent of your heating and air conditioning it manufactures water so now you have a sustainable home that's what this building's about. Right behind me is one of the features of the pod, and that's the uh, Vortex uh, system for aerating the water. This does several important things, and it's important to understand these systems, and if you're really gonna understand how all of the water is being treated in this system. There's really three different forms of water that are going to be addressed in water treatment. One is the black water, which is really the water just from the toilets. The other is the gray water, which is the water from the sinks, and it has, might have soap film or a little bit of dirt in it, maybe food particles. And then the third type is, of course, the atmospheric water, which is ultimately going to be utilized uh, as the drinking water supply. It's been a continual fight because I've always gone in and done things, what they said, it cannot be done, it's an impossibility. But there was a time, going back many, many years, when everybody had to walk, there was no such thing as a wheel. But today, wheels are everywhere. It's only because somebody thought of a different way. We have a biofuel Hummer here at Angel's Nest just because we want to show people that you can have really cool toys like this and still be environmentally friendly. You can produce all of our fuel right here in the United States, right here on this property, out of garbage. To anybody looking in, just look like might look like any other dirt road they've ever ridden. But in fact, this dirt road was put together quite a few months ago now, and it hasn't changed uh, noticeably at all, even though we've had quite a bit of serious weather around here. The reason is, is because we're using a different type of technology, and it, it relates to uh, a material called a soil stabilizer. And what this does is it makes the road much more dense, much more resistant to having any kind of problems. I done a test on this to see what the PSI would be. And a week later, we registered 3,000 PSI loading factor on this road. You're only looking at 50% of the cost. But the ability to establish a low cost, durable road is a real boon to these, uh, these communities that are in developing countries. My name is Ed Minshaw. I'm originally from Alberta, Canada. I'm a physicist and an electronics engineer. What we're doing out here is trying to save the planet one home at a time. The earth itself is a completely enclosed life support system and we're soiling it. We've got to figure out a way to live on this planet prosperously and we've also got to figure out a way to do it in such a way that we're not wrecking it for future generations. There is a billion and a half people in China, 1.2 billion people in India. They all want to live as well as Americans do. What we want to do is help them to skip the dirtiest part of the Industrial Revolution and have them live in beauty with zero impact on the environment. Joe Holden, Aerospace, 
marine automotive engineer, one of the premier engineers in the world designing and engineering the pod to ISO standards. A Rolls Royce engineer and innovator in the world, the best in the world is designing our pods. And this is the hundred to $150,000 homes that will be available to the US. Solar, wind, biofuels, rain catchment. We have it all in the middle of a high desert. No water, no electricity, sustainability. There's the research center. And next year we bring you the seven day home. All sustainable. Bring it on. The roof acts like the, the leaf of the tree. It collects energy and water. And when it rains, it runs on the roof into a scupper, into our 5,000 gallon cisterns, operates nine bathrooms showers. For most of the history of mankind, where human beings have gotten their good quality drinking water from, has been the rain falling from, from clouds in the form of purified water that can be used as drinking water. We use that same concept, only we facilitate, and here's our mechanical cloud system here, from the evaporation of the atmospheric water coming out of the greenhouse forms a little cloud in there and it condenses the water. It's purified and brought into good quality drinking water. I'm Sir Charles Schultz. I'm one of the scientists working here at Angel's Nest to provide the technologies that will make life better for everybody. I have a long background in aerospace and weapons systems and I'm applying many of the technologies that I worked in to help answer the problems that we have today in the world. We have the answers to all of our problems. We simply have to know how to apply them. We're surrounded by energy and resources that are available at all times. We simply have to know how to gather them and apply them properly. I have a steam exchanger, a heat exchanger, at the focus here. And one of the things we discovered is one of the cheapest ways to gather solar energy is with a lens. So with nothing more than a plastic recycled lens, you can gather enough energy to run home very simply. If we were to place a coin at the focus of this lens, the heat would be intense enough to melt that coin in a matter of seconds. We have a simple choice. Continue down the dead-end road of wasteful uses of our resources that will cripple future generations or join the renaissance of creativity that will positively change the world forever. Thank you.